Oh, we're live. Yeah, look at that. We're live. What's going on live, people? You know, the lives. Oh, excuse me. I'm in it for the um, lives, to be honest. You know, in it for the lives, bro. Yeah. It's Let's the get the lives chair, for me. Huh? It's the lives for me. It's the, li <laughs> it's the lives for me personally, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me get let me get this shared real quick. Share it on my yeah, page. Let's get this let's get this shared. Get it out here. Get it out to the public. That's right. <clears throat> I'm a nerd again wearing glasses. But counterbalancing it with a tank top. <laughs> <laughs> In the winter. It's all about balance, bro. It's all about you gotta bring balance in this life. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time. We're in a goofy mood, We're starting later than usual. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? There's a there's a darn good reason for that. There sure yeah. is. There sure is. Yep. So let's go ahead and start recording. Let's do it. Oh, wait until health checks have been completed. Let me refresh that page. Dad gum oh. health checks, man. All right. We should help. Oh, nope. Still running. There oh, we go. Yep. There you go. So that you were ready. Sure does. Okay. Here Look at that. Man, so exciting episode on this one. We got a lot of good things to talk about. But first, sure a big do. life change for none other than Dennis and Rice. Yes. yes Coming yes. to us live, if you're on the live stream, uh, from Austin, Texas, dude. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my new yeah. residence. Yeah. You done up and left, man. You done I did. Up. I did. So what was, tell the people, right? I don't want to mm. pretend like I don't know. Obviously, I'm <laughs> very well aware. Um, mm -hmm. What was the impetus, the inspiration, the motivation for you to move, man? You know, you know what just, uh, you know, I felt, uh, felt Dallas was just not uh, oh. my vibe anymore, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I grew Dallas, huh? <laughs> No, um, I uh, I got an amazing new opportunity here in Austin, and um, I'm very very thankful for it. Uh, more of that will come, um, but uh, yeah, I just got a, a new amazing new career opportunity, um, and it just so happens to be in Austin, um, and so I am uh, super psyched about it. I don't I. I don't want to talk about it yet. Uh, I know we did talk a little bit about this before, you know, um, before we started recording, but uh, I do want to just say, you know, I, um, I will, you know, let you guys know where this new opportunity or career opportunity is. Um, I just like to have kind of similar to how I had my, for my previous job. Um, I like to wait a little bit, you know, at least have a week under my belt before I, uh, before I rip that bandaid off. But yes, Definitely. I moved to Austin for that, for that whole sole purpose. Uh, it's been hard to move away from Dallas. I mean, you know, I've grown up there. Um, and I guess I should really say the DFW, but, um, sure. I've grown up there, you know, my, I've essentially spent most of my life, uh, in DFW. And so it's kind of hard to leave. Yeah. Uh, but you know, on to bigger and better opportunities. And now I get to, you know, um, live in a place that I have visited multiple times. Yeah. So, yeah. Which you became a fan of. I mean, we've talked about it for a while. You know, you became a fan of <clears throat> of Austin a few years back and mm -hmm. uh, kept going back, which I was very excited for you for, you know. Um, so, yeah, I know that you kind of found a, found a space with that, you know, found a um, place that you liked and it turned into brighter days and, <clears throat> and better opportunities, you know. Yeah, exactly. which is really cool. And I'm obviously very excited for you. I think it's going to play out well. I think you're really going to like it down there. Um, for me, uh, I've realized upon Denison moving, I was like, well, 
I guess I'm just traveling to Austin now. <laughs> 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 of course, I mean, I'll still I'll visit Dallas every now and then, but I'm ex mm -hmm. excited to explore for me a new place, you know, and see those kind of things. I've been there once. I've been there twice, actually. But um, <clears throat> for me, I I'm really looking forward to checking that out and what that looks like. And I'm very excited for you, of course, when you're ready to talk about it more. We can. Um, but exciting news to start off our catch up uh, for Denison, of course. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're really, really happy for you, man, for sure. Um, yeah. The new place looks dope. What a backdrop, right? Yeah, so, I know. It's uh, classic. Yeah, we're, you know, yeah we're, we're coming live from my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. It just it looks classy for some reason. Meanwhile, it's a it's a it's a cool apartment, you know. It's uh, of course smaller than my uh, my my old place, but, yeah. Right. Um, uh, but it's a uh, it's really really nice. Uh, it's in a nice area, at least from what I can tell. <laughs> um, but it's it's been a nice area so far, um, yeah. and it's got like everything that I can ever want. It's a nice quiet apartment, um, quiet area. It's yeah, you know, I like it. I really do. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. Kind of, uh, I kind of feel like you know a lot of this big move is just kind of like a nice little reset, a nice new beginning to, um, to my new year. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a new year, new city for Denison. Same Denison. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this really is actually our first live stream of the new year, too. Um, if you're listening on the audio, you've already heard uh, the word this year from us. But, um, yeah, first live stream of the new year. So we know we're doing it later than normal. Thank you guys for jumping on with this one. Wish Dennis and uh, congratulations, if you could, for his new location. Um, I'm excited to come down there, man. <laughs> and then we're yeah. reconvening in Dallas in a couple months, too, and hopefully we can get – an in-person catch-up scheduled for that as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it'll be a really good time. So um, we have a lot to talk about on this one. Um, we are going to talk about – well, let me let me set this up real quick, okay? Uh, pretty mm -hmm. much I'll set it up for you. Um, so the Idaho murders, we've all been hearing about them. We've all been uh, talking about them, right? They, <clears throat> it's weird how that, how that news story has developed. It, it really didn't get a lot of uh, attention at first, I feel like, because, you know, it was in Idaho. Um, and I, I feel like that's unfortunate because it's a really tragic story. And uh, it took a long time for them to find the suspect in this situation. I don't think that was until, well, actually, it took a long time for them to arrest him. Mm -hmm. I think they knew where he was at all times. Um, but. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh um sorry, <laughs> got distracted by some pop up on my screen here. Um no worries. you know, so it's a it's an interesting situation um because it developed, it grew more and more attention as people were like, Why haven't they arrested this guy yet? Uh they were just accumulating what they needed to arrest him. It mm -hmm. seems now in hindsight, right? But one of the things about this guy, Brian Koberger. Mm -hmm. uh, that they arrested, he's a suspect in the case, is that he had his uh, phone turned off at the time of the murder, right? So that's one of the pieces of evidence against him. Had his phone turned off, and they said, so they lost on the tracing that they have, his whereabouts, because, again, his phone was shut off. Mm -hmm. um, but as you and I have understood it, Phones are still traceable even when they are turned off, right? To an and, extent, yeah. Yeah, to an extent. <clears throat> and so it, it to me, brings up a discussion in that I want to take it in that direction. How uh, your phones are being tracked. Um, and again, we're not coming uh, at this from, you know, a, a chicken little, the sky is falling thing. This is just a fact, how your phones are tracked, how that data is used. Um, in the effort of public safety, uh, you know, or uh, of course that's what we're being told, but for situations like this, it did allow them to track this guy and find out his proximity to this murder, given the time. Um, 
<clears throat> and so, yeah, I think we want to talk about that, uh, talk about how that information is used and how even if your phone is shut off, uh, it can still be still be tracked. I would actually say with things like that new Apple iOS, and of course I know uh, certain Androids do this too, the ability to connect a satellite, it's even more trackable than it was before. So yeah. all that we want to jump into on this very first live stream of the year. So let's go ahead and get into it. Yeah. yeah. It's really good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And obviously it's, you know, it's late, so we can keep this relatively short. <laughs> of course. But <laughs> just just letting the listeners know, <clears throat> you know, buckle up. <laughs> it's be quiet yeah, you got to let them know, man. got to let yeah, them got- know that... Uh, no, we're 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 still going. It's one of the things about the the live stream. They get that good behind the scenes take, you know. They do. Um, yeah. So let's we'll see. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's do this, man. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? I'm John. And I'm Denison. And this is the catch up. <laughs> Should be like the intro because it's you're in a different place in Texas now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm now in central Texas. Rather than, um... Is it considered central Texas? Mm-hmm. Technically, I think. Huh. Huh. Austin is considered Central Texas. Wait, that's something. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> God dang. Dad go. But with Dallas or Dallas or DFW would be considered North Texas. Northeast. Yeah. Well, North Texas. North North Texas. Yeah. I it's thought that awesome. was the panhandle. No, they, no, they consider Dallas, North Texas. They consider the okay. Panhandle the Panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not anymore for. I guess they're just like, well, Dallas is North Texas, so the Panhandle can't be North North Texas. <laughs> so they're just like, ah, Panhandle. <laughs> yeah. What is considered North Texas? Residents of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex generally consider North Texas to include the area south of Oklahoma, east of Abilene, west of Paris, and north of Waco, a.k.a. the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. All right, then. Right, then. <laughs> Who knew, bro? I didn't know that there was... I didn't know. Man. Learn something new every day, you know? You do. You do. The geography of the greatest country in the world, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Three it's Texas, and then the rest of the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His own thing, man. All right, three, two, one. Before we jump into our topics tonight, I want to remind people the three best ways to support our show. Number one, jump on the live stream with us. We live stream every Thursday, come rain or shine, on Facebook and youtube except for this week on youtube but on facebook for sure um so you get the opportunity to jump in and have a discussion with us about the topic that we're talking about in real time it's a great way to support the show and uh we get to have a two-way conversation with you it's the best part of the show we're not just catching up with each other but we're catching up with you number two Give us a rating and review on your favorite platform, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching. You, in some form or fashion, you can leave a rating. You can leave a review. Can, you can subscribe. There's all kinds of things you can do, all kinds. So go ahead and give us a good rating. Give us a good review. If you like us, that helps us be shown to more people and helps the podcast grow. Uh, and number three, if you want to support us financially, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, hit the link down below that says support the show or shop. It'll take you to our shop page over on Etsy.com, a uh, temporary host of our shop platform. And you can get some good 
clean merch. You, yeah, it's so clean. You can even get hoodies, long sleeves, beanies, and hats. All of it is available. And uh, all of it will keep you warm and looking stylish this winter. In fact, I need a, I need to self order one of those long sleeves, bro, because they are clean. They are comfy. I will say. Yeah, that. we haven't repped the merch for a minute. I know, I know, I know. We I, we got to get that. We got to get back on that. We do. We need to set an example for our listeners, bro. Mm-hmm. So so we'll get back on that. So hopefully you get on that as well. Um, if you have any orders or issues with an order or anything like that, direct message us, let us know. Uh, I do a good job of maintaining the site and making sure everything's up and running. If you ever have any issues, just let us know. Okay. With that said, let's get into this topic. So I, you know, I kind of set it up already. Uh, phone tracing was a big piece of how Brian Koberger was arrested in the Idaho murders. Um, other pieces, he left the sheath to the knife they used at the crime scene. Uh, somebody who wasn't murdered in the house saw his face, the part of his face that wasn't covered by a mask. Uh, why she didn't get killed is still a mystery. It's really weird. And then, mm-hmm. um, but she saw his eyes, his eyebrows, that kind of thing. And then he, he, uh, it was very apparent which car he was driving um, and they traced that car. But the big part of it was they traced him within the vicinity of this house that entire night, but between three and 5 AM, nothing. Five days later, he changes the registration on his vehicle or the license plate he gets, you know, new, new license plate and registration. Um, and then, you know, a couple days after that, he's driving back home. So to Pennsylvania, I think. Uh, yeah. And so anyway, again, the big portion of this is the phone records. And, you know, again, I want to go back here. Let's talk about the ability for phones to be traced, even when they're off. Is that a thing? Um, and to what capability? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at least from, from what I have, looked at um and and heard to an extent the phone keeps itself a lock even while it's essentially turned off right um now of course it's different right if you take the battery out or whatever like that but just turning off the phone itself um there are certain there are certain sensors and other telemetry that is still kind of going on in the background. It's just at a much, you know, lower rate. Um, but yeah, essentially what I, what I've read is that, um, it can still, it may not have, it may not be able to send signals out. Right. But it will log all of that stuff. So that way, by the time that the phone has been turned back on, it can essentially report back. And say like, oh, I went here, 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 here. Um, and because the thing is, right, you have to remember that our phones have a lot of sensors in them. A lot of yep. sensors, um, just a ton of hardware in there um, that can be used, even if they're not connected to the internet, to be able to do a relatively decent job of pinpointing where we are right it's essentially like putting a blindfold on a person but they can still they know the footsteps of someone who's carrying them or whatever like that um you know they can kind of figure out which direction that you turned or whatever like that just think of our phones doing the same thing right yeah. it's it's like okay i was turned off at this point this was my last location um i probably went north here I probably went south here because of uh-huh. the way that I turned and turned and, and stuff like that uh, from the steps that I can take because, you know, your phones can also take your steps. Um, yep. <clears throat> the amount of steps that I've taken here, this is probably, um, it can't do GPS data, so it can't do speed, but it can do something similar to it or whatever like that. Uh, also, once it's turned on, right, it's automatically going to get that 
instant ping of like, okay, my location is here. So now it can also use all of that data that it collected while it was asleep. Well, in some ways asleep, right? Um, but uh, while it was turned off, it can use all of that data uh, that it's collected and essentially create its own map of exactly where you were um, in what, you know, what happened. Gotcha. So um, that's interesting to me then that that has not been mentioned. Basically the day that we're recording this, a bunch of new information came out due to what's caused a prop called a probable cause affidavit. Mm -hmm. um, as someone who worked in news, what that is, is truly something I don't know why it's released to the public always. Um, all things pertaining to investigations and all this kind of stuff are a matter of open records, obviously. Um, but there are certain things I remember from when I worked in the news that we would get probable cause affidavits on um, child sex crimes or things like that. Or, or you remember, man, I remember telling you about this when we had, this weird string of like parents who murdered their kids here. Remember mm. these huge investigations about it. And mm. so those kind of things would come out and I would end up learning way more than quite honestly, I needed to about that situation. Right. So I stopped mm. reading them actually. Uh, fun fact. Um, I, I would always let someone else in the newsroom read them. And if I needed to put it in the show, I put it in the show, but otherwise I didn't. Um, and so I find it, I always found it odd that people latch onto those things. Now with this, there were so many more, uh, even though it's cliche questions and answers, right. Um, that I think is helpful, especially because there was a national eye on what was going on here. Well, what this really helped do is show law enforcement had this under control the whole time. They knew what they were doing the whole time. Uh, they even gained DNA from the trash can of his parents' home to be able to ma uh, match the DNA paternally from his dad to him uh, yeah. to the knife. Yeah, to the knife, which is crazy. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they they knew what they were doing the whole time. Anyway, the point is, um, you know, in this PCA, this probable cause affidavit, uh, it talked about how – they were tracking him up until the time of the murder. They couldn't track him anymore. His phone stopped pinging. And I just find that interesting because I feel like one of two things they could either have they're they're either lying, right? Uh, mm -hmm. cause they don't want to divulge the full capabilities of what they can do or, um, those involve other resources like federal resources to track with those capabilities. What do you think? I'm kind of leaning toward the latter. Honestly, I would say it's the latter. I, 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 because the problem is, is that a lot of this data that I was talking about is all stored with the company that the phone that manufactures the phone, right? So if it's Apple, if it's an iPhone, it's it's stored with Apple. If it's if it's a Google phone or an Android phone, it's probably stored with Google. Right, because it's using some of those services to go back to the, that manufacturer. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially what would have to happen is it wouldn't be a local law enforcement, right? They wouldn't have access to that. Local law enforcement really only has cell phone towers that they can ping, which you can use to, of course, triangulate where someone is. Um, but you can't really get the most accurate amount of data or whatever like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, so most of that information that the, the phone is, you know, storing itself um, is going directly to the servers of the manufacturer that it's created by. So yeah, you would have to, you know, use, um, you'd have to use national, you know, of government agencies to be able to acquire that type of information because they'd essentially have to do like a subpoena, I think, uh, yeah. to the, um, to the essentially the manufacturer of the phone to say, Hey, can you release this type of data? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then they can say yes or no to help the investigation. Right. We already heard about something similar to this well, a long time ago when it came to uh, Apple, right. Not releasing the infer 
the or not unlocking a phone so that way it could be used a part of a, an investigation a criminal investigation so it's kind of the same type of deal sure um well i think um one thing i've noticed too is due to my research uh and, and you're right you know you, you do hear about this and about these other in dire situations they have other resources for this kind of stuff right mm -hmm. so the research i've done here you know <clears throat> one way phones can be traced is through their international mobile equipment identity number um this is a unique 15 digit number that is assigned to every phone is used to identify the device on mobile network uh, law enforcement agencies can request that number from phone companies and use it to track the location of a phone do you know uh if that is um traceable uh even when the phone is shut off it seemed like it was uh i mean technically it would be i mean it but it goes back to kind of like cell phone towers, right? So if you yep. go back to the mobile data towers, so um, if you get that number, you can use, you can find out via, you know, uh, whatever the phone is connected to, whatever mobile network it's connected to, you can figure out exactly where it is because it's saying, okay, well, it's pinging this particular cell phone tower uh, that's, you know, giving it data or whatever like that. Um, and then that gives you a really almost, I wouldn't say precise, but a very, very close uh, approximation, approximation of exactly where this person is. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, <clears throat> let's see some other methods here. Uh, I know, I know you were mentioning some of them already. Um, their IP address. Uh, that to me You know, the thing about that, if the phone shut off, it's not going to keep pinging an IP address to tell where it's at, right? It's not. It's not. No. 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 Like I said, all... way, sorry, I was just going to say that's one way outside of triangulation um, that they could get even more specific location of where somebody is. This is where via 5G, LTE, all that kind of stuff. This happens with your cars, too, if they're connected. They can know where your car is at at all times. But what, what were you going to say? No, no, I was just going to say, um, yeah, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, if you got the IP address, you can figure out exactly, uh, where someone is, or at least a good, again, another good approximation of exactly where someone is. Um, and it is a unique, it can be a unique identifier for a phone uh same with like a mac address or something like that but again that does require internet um you know if, if it, uh, <clears throat> yes there is still something to be said about a phone when it is off um the network it is still hard to but it, you know there is still data that is stored on the phone that the phone itself that is tracking it like again again like i was saying before it's not it, it if it's not able to ping out, so if it's not able to say any send any data, it may keep all that stuff stored locally until it can send that data out. And then once that's done, or once it's turned on, then it just you know blur blurts it out. And so essentially, it's just doing reverse tracking, right? Yeah. So, gotcha. The, yeah. So you could do technically do that. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit more about uh gps tracking how does that work uh i know that for example like the new iphones have the capability of communicating with um satellites for emergency calls mm -hmm. is that does that open itself up to any different level of tracking versus what gps already provided or no uh I mean, I guess technically it would open it up to be a little bit more uh, accurate, but okay, I wouldn't say that it, I don't know, it, it could, it could make it a little bit more accurate because I'll say, right, the GPS that you and me and everyone else uses is not the, it's not super hyper act, accurate, right? Right. 
Um, now there is a version of GPS that is that way, but it's not a, available to normal you you know normal citizens. It's uh, available to governments essentially, right? Okay. Um, now I guess if you're using a specific satellite that your phone is specifically connecting to, you could then I would imagine bypass some of that, like only people you know, of this access level have access to this specific uh, stuff. And so law enforcement agents would be able to say, okay, well, if it's connecting directly to this specific satellite, then that means it has to be within this range. And that means it also has to have, you know, it's, you can kind of triangulate a little bit more accurately, a little bit more precisely of like, okay, sense. so this person has to be exactly here um, because it's the only way that there's a good line of sight to this particular satellite and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's interesting. So there's a number of ways um, that, so, and that, and that is something too, that could still be done even if the phone's turned off. Right. Um, uh, the satellite, no. You would no. have to have the phone on. You'd have to have the phone on to do that. So technically, I, I, you know, it's really cell phone triangulation uh, and the internet, uh, the IP, right? Because it'd still be communicating that data. Um, there are ways that could still be traced even when it's turned off. Or as you said earlier, uh, when it's restarted, it's kept track of all that data and then it sends it off. Um, yeah, exactly. Which also wasn't mentioned in regard to the investigation, which I found, um, I found interesting. Um, yeah. So, I, and I feel like this is a good point too. This is something I was reading. Right. Um, the fact that phones can be traced when they're turned off is a reminder of the amount of information that is generated and stored by our phones. Right. Um, and the potential for that information to be used in the investigations. So. You know, I kind of want to move on to the next part. Um, how's the fact that our phones can be traced even when they're turned off affect our privacy, right? Because mm. I, I think like, you know, again, I don't want to come and I don't blame people who are concerned by this at all, but that's not the discussion we're trying to have that the government's going to take away your rights by tracking your iPhone. Um what we're looking at is, you know, it's a viable method for law enforcement and obviously the next level of that, which would be like FBI, CIA, all that kind of stuff. Um, but wouldn't it also then we've already seen many high level hacks, especially in the last decade, um, you know, and, and I don't know how that information could necessarily be used against you unless it is someone who's physically trying to harm you. Right. But that does it does pose a risk, does it not? Yeah, I mean it does, it does. But I'll say like the data that we're talking about, right? Let's see, IP addresses. We already know about that, right? Everybody knows that if technically someone is able to get a, a hold of your, and I need to be more, spe I need to preface this by saying your public IP address. So there, uh, for those of you who don't know, there's. Technically, you have two IP addresses, right? You have a public and a private. Hmm. Your public IP address is what is getting broadcasted out to the world. That is what can be used to find out exactly where you are. Your private IP address is something that is only available in your network. So inside of your home, right? So yeah. stuff like that. Um, but I, I wanted to preface that, I, or I really wanted to kind of, talk about that because I know that a lot of people kind of get that mixed up um, or don't understand like, Oh, well this, you know, they've got this or that or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so technically, yes, people can hack and grab your public IP address. That's not that hard actually. Um, sure. It's not that hard to find those. Uh, that's also how you get some of those. Um, uh DDoS attacks. Well, it's a, I shouldn't say DDoS. Well, I mean, yes, technically you could do DDoS attacks um, or even explain uh, that. Doxing. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, well, explain both of them, man. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, let's see. A DDoS would be essentially uh, it's a denial of service 
uh, which so it's essentially someone knows. Um, I mean, I guess in this particular case, they know your IP address, so they're able to essentially send tons and tons of. Uh, just think of it as like you have a mailbox, right? Yeah. And someone says, hey, you know what? I'm going to send you some mail. So they send you some mail, right? Normal internet connection is that one mail. You get that one letter from, you know, um, daddy internet, and then, you know, you send that mail back to them and blah, blah, blah. You're going back and forth, right? A DDoS attack is essentially someone saying like, hey, instead of you just getting like one piece of mail a day or something like that, I'm going to send you 50. <laughs> um, and so think about your mailbox, right? It's, it's, right. it's a, it has a limited size. So essentially you're going to, they're going to send 50 uh, pieces of mail to your mailbox. It's going to get full. And then they're going to continue to can send you 50 um, uh, pieces of mail. Right. And this is all from one person. And you have to think about it that, you have a mailbox that is technically supposed to receive, you know, multiple pieces of mail from multiple pieces of people. So think about it. You're getting 50 letters or whatever like that a day. Um, but then you also have your mail that you got from grandma um, that's supposed to come to your mailbox, but it doesn't make it because guess what? You already, your mailbox is stuffed and there's no way for you to actually get out of the mail. So that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's essentially, it's just overloading, um, your service to where you're not able to actually do anything on the internet. Um, uh, the, a doxing, right. Is, uh, kind of more the, uh, it's essentially since your public IP address can be traced to a very specific coordinate, right? Mm -hmm. Like your address, um, like your real life address. People can send all sorts of stuff uh, to your home, to your actual home, your actual residence um, that are, is unsightly, right? They can send you a whole bunch of like threatening letters. Um, they can also, uh, out who you are to right. everyone on the internet. So doxing would essentially be your public information is being pushed out even more, like public and even private information being pushed out to everyone, as well as people sending you a whole bunch of stuff that is just really hurtful, really mean, as well as uh, there are some doxing attacks where people actually have like, you know, vandalism to their cars, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, which are, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't want no, go to ahead. A great example of that <clears throat> that came up in the news recently was Elon Musk, who uh, was tired of his plane uh, being shown on Twitter. There's an account that specifically shares when uh, a plane is taking off or landing, his plane uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. And so that is a form of doxing, he claimed, and that's why he banned those accounts uh, temporarily that do that. Funny uh, thing about that is that got so much negativity because some of those people were journalists mm -hmm. and said, you know, Elon Musk is already banning journalists on Twitter. That was like the storyline. But they weren't mainstream journalists, and they also – were only banned for seven days. It wasn't permanent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, man, they're really trying to make this guy look like the villain here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, that's not that bad. I mean, that's literally just a, a slap on the wrist to say, hey, don't, don't do that. You know? Yeah, exactly. And you can't blame people. I mean, it's, it's weird to me, not only that there is a Twitter account that would do things like share where Elon Musk's location is or his plane is. Um, mm -hmm. And it's even weirder that there are people that follow it. I'm like, why? You know, I don't, I don't get it. But also a side note on Elon Musk. I know you saw this Tesla. This car goes 250 feet off a cliff mm -hmm. in 
Los Santos. It has to be, man. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like some Grand Theft Auto stuff, man. Mm-hmm. But I know it was in California. Yep. It's actually, I mean, it's kind of sad because this was an attempted murder on his family. Yeah. Um, his wife was in the car, right? I know his two kids were. Yeah, yeah. His wife, is, yeah, it was essentially his whole family was in the car. And yeah. Just, yeah he, he drove them off a cliff. He said, you know what? I'm, it, here we go. And the um, car was so well built that they didn't die. In yeah, fact, exactly. In fact, their injuries were mel- relatively minor. You know, mm-hmm. if you think about the crazy things in it's news, that, yeah, if you think about the crazy things in news that happened this past week, all of them tragic. You know, this Brian Koberger getting arrested, uh, the the defensive back for uh, the Bills having a heart attack on the field. Um. Ken Block dying yep. um, from a snowmobile crash, right? And none of those, uh, I mean, are as, well, I, well, the Koberger thing aside, the other two aren't as harsh of an impact as a car going 250 feet off a cliff, you know? But then you have Jeremy Renner, who gets run over by his own snowcat that weighs over 14,000 pounds and he's still alive. Mm-hmm. That's insane. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And, and, and so then you have, yeah, just, I don't know, people surviving things you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect them to survive. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's just a testament to the modern age that we're a part of nowadays. You know, I think yeah, I think that's something that kind of gets overlooked a lot, and a lot of people are like, "Oh man, you know, we're we're in the worst times and stuff like that." And sure, there are certain portions of our lives that aren't great, but we are in the best time frame when it comes to just modern miracles, essentially, right? Yeah. Mm. Think about it. This what two hundred years ago, right? Something like that. People thought the best way to cure something was draining blood. Yep. <laughs> Leeches, man. Yeah, that's like, you that's... Is that is that why? No, no. I just i I just thought of thought of it, but I know they're. Um, but I mean, think about it, right? That that was literally what they thought. Like, you know what? Let's just drain some blood out of you. And yeah, we'll you'll get better. All that, yeah, yeah. And like, what was it? George Washington, uh, you know, the first or one of the founding fathers of the United States, um, had complained that he had a sore throat and he wasn't feeling too well. Doctors came over and said, you know what we need to do? We just need to drain that out of you. And so they went ahead and drained his blood. And he essentially died. Most, uh, he had a, it was a sore throat and a cough and something else or whatever like that. Right. Things that he probably could have survived if he just would have waited it out or whatever like that. But, you know, the doctors, these were the best doctors at the time. Right. Said, you know what, let's just go ahead and, Blood let you. You'll be all right. Um, and he died. <laughs> he yeah. died like a few days later. And yeah. a lot of doctors are saying that most of the most likely what happened was he died from just blood loss. Yeah. And maybe not even from the ailment that he had at the time. Yeah. Which, you know, the infected, the blood is still the purest part. The infected part is the infected part. It's nothing to do with the blood. It makes you wonder when you, when you talk about those kind of things, <clears throat> what 200 years from now they'll look back on that we do currently as a treatment of like, what were they thinking? You know, mm-hmm. it really does make me, it makes me wonder that. Um, so I think you're right. And the thing I wanted to say about Jeremy Renner too, cause I like that guy a lot. I always have liked that guy. It sounds like he does a lot for his community. They all love him. Um, he's an honorary member of the sheriff's office in his county and he was clearing off snow on his 
property and surrounding properties. You know, he just seems like a hardworking, good dude. And I think the thing, obviously I wasn't there, but from the description that I heard, it sounds like the thing that saved him, in my opinion, is the fact it was so snowy. Because, yeah, he got run over. But the snow kind of gave a little bit, right? Yeah. Whereas if he was just on flat ground, he'd probably be dead. You know? Um, <clears throat> but, man, yeah, he things started rolling. He should not have tried to stop it. But it's easy to say in hindsight. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and, and on top of that, too, I think a testament to what you're mentioning with how far we've come the integrity crumple zones dispersion of energy while also maintaining the frame on that tesla so it doesn't just crumple into a flat i mean you've seen that with other cars that have taken far less impactful falls um that are just like a pancake when they when they come to you know um i think that is a testament to the design and development of a tesla but also um the doctor that saved the life of that football player i'm sorry i'm not remembering his name right now but to resuscitate him on the field twice you know mm -hmm. that that's that's a miracle man that doesn't happen it is it is and it's insane that you know we can even just say like that's uh, you know that we have doctors that skilled like that's that's crazy yeah and yeah it it really is a miracle yeah yeah it really is i mean that <clears throat> you're and you're right and on football teams too to have doctors that skilled that's that's impressive so um yeah uh let's see let's get back on on the topic here real fast so obviously i'm glad that you're my co-host on this show because you are the tech genius of the ketchup podcast, the roving tech correspondent. <laughs> um, literally, now that you move, well, yeah, no, but yeah, now that you moved, you're literally roving. Um, what steps can we take to protect our privacy? If that's something that's concerned for somebody. And I, I hesitate to, I, I want to frame I want to frame this present uh, this question properly because mm -hmm. <clears throat> still there's important information that law enforcement needs to be able to gather. Right. Yep. And so it's not in an effort to try and skirt law enforcement, but to protect ourselves from those uh, protect ourselves. Sorry. Losing my ability to talk apparently to protect <laughs> ourselves from those, uh, from those hacks or, what have you, you know, um, what are some things that we can do to protect our privacy as far as location and always being known where we're at. One thing, one simple thing I'll throw out there from, uh, what I know is that if you turn location services off on your apps, uh, that will help. Um, because those apps also are storing your location, not just your phone, is doing that your apps are too unfortunately so many apps require your location to work properly which is really not always necessary but they do it because they want that information so they can target <clears throat> the ads better um, <laughs> exactly no but, no you're right um yeah but that's one that's one uh thing you can do right yeah no it is it is um honestly I mean, uh, you know, the, the, I'm going to give a few options, but I, I would say, honestly, the, the best advice that I can truly give you is, and it's not something that I don't think it's truly possible in our modern society at this point, but, you know, is not having a smartphone. Um, and even that doesn't fully protect you, but that at least gives you a far better leg up than anything else, right? Yeah. Um, but I, again, like I said, I, in our modern society, it's probably not something that's the easiest thing to do. So, <clears throat> um, so really and truly, you know, what you said there, uh, limiting the amount of apps that actually have access to your location information uh, is probably yep. one of the best things that you can do. 
Um, and then I would say even, um, you know, just restricting the use uh, <clears throat> in general of location services. But even if we're going out, <clears throat> sorry, even if we're going outside of that process, right, of just location services and stuff like that and just going to like just overall good security things that you could do for your phone, of course, you know, kind of like how we talk about on everything right good clean password on your on your phone or any sort of biometric is always really good um how so how would uh, that help you in this situation in this situation um a password in some ways if your phone is encrypted it can make it to where that data is much harder to mine right uh, and usually if it's locked behind, say, a biometric or something similar to that, it it can make it even harder to grab that data. Gotcha. Um, so uh, let's be clear. Part of the reason, too, that <clears throat> this doesn't pertain to protecting your information from law enforcement is because law enforcement has deals set up with the providers to get that information. Um if needed right correct location information so uh that is the caveat to all of this so yeah go ahead correct correct yeah yeah most of these this stuff is is mainly to protect yourself against like cyber criminals right who are yeah. who would try to mine said data uh to use it against you or something similar to that um yep. but yeah of course doing that um uh, like I said, I'm just kind of going to go through some of just good cybersecurity practices. Like I said, passwords are good. Um, and making sure that if information that you're putting out there just in general are not things that are easy to be used. So, for instance, right, uh, if you ever remember those like security password um, or security questions that you get right on any of those uh applications or um or accounts that you have and you know it'll be like what was your school uh your first high school or what was the name of the high school that you went to or whatever like that yeah you know, try not to put those right because those are easy yep uh, because yeah. think about it right anybody who has a facebook account and uh is your friend can technically get a lot of that information right they can get yeah. your date of birth they can probably get your maiden name if you had that on there they can probably get your high school they can probably get a lot of that stuff without even having to do anything crazy yes. right? they're not even having to do <laughs> fishing or anything like that they literally are just able to grab that because it's public information at this point yeah so having stuff, stuff like, like that your, stuff like your first whatever is actually a pretty good one because that could be negligible. Like what you consider your first pet may not be what other people would consider your first pet, right? Like maybe some people consider your first pet, the first one you bought, but you consider it the first one you grew up with or something like that. Right. So true that that does help. Um, yeah. The new, I would say the newest like cybersecurity suggestion is actually to treat those passwords as, or treat those questions is actually just another pass more passwords so okay. instead of actually saying you know my first dog was fido <laughs> my first yeah. dog's name is fido or something right. like that it'd be like my first dog's name is you know random gibberish or whatever <laughs> sure. um yeah. or because fido. again <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> because again that's that's more information that is easily Right? Yeah. Because think about it, if it's something that you befriend this person, you know, you can get that information out via phishing, right? So yeah. it's, it's just, you know, I, I, I can say, like, you know, you know, right, if I wanted to, <laughs> not saying this, but if I wanted to, like, hack John, right, I have a lot of information from him because of our friendship over yeah. the years that I could probably get into a lot of stuff because it's like, Oh wait, I already know this. This, this. I already <laughs> have a lot of this information, but yeah. I'm just saying like, that is, 
you want to make sure it's not information. That's the reason why a lot of cybersecurity experts say you should treat those security questions as just more passwords because yeah. it makes it uh, that much harder, right? Those aren't things that you can fish anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great, great point. Uh, so, yeah. And then let's see. Another thing that you can easily do, um, you know, you can also make sure like camera access again is another thing that can be used for location data. It can be used for, uh, of course, facial recognition stuff. It can be used for a lot of stuff. So again, limiting the access to certain applications to have that stuff, as well as limiting the amount of information that you're putting out there on social media. Because again, and it's something that I think a lot of us don't think about, everything that we put out there I mean, we all know about this, right? We all hear about it. You know, the, the internet is eternal. Um, but the also part about that is the internet is also very public, a lot more public than we think about. Sure. Um, you can put it to where, you know, only my friends can see this or all my blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't always mean that that is always going to be upheld by, say, the companies that we are posting this information onto, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, stuff like facial structure, facial data can all be grabbed technically from a very, you know, wide composite of photos that you have in, say, your Facebook. Or Wait, your you mean like a live stream? Yes. Oh my <laughs> um, when when because I mean, think about it, right? You have it. Uh, of course, you know there are, are other things that you can do, but. When you have enough information, you can kind of, especially with technology the way that it is, you can kind of recreate someone's face or recreate someone's a lot of things, right? That's how we have yeah. deep fakes, right? And and those deep fakes are getting better and better because, and it's usually from like celebrities, right? As we normally see them because they are very public figures. So they actually have a lot of... Um, images or even you uh, there's a lot of images photos of those videos of those people that they can use to you know throw it onto something because mm -hmm. they, they can essentially recreate. there's a lot to pull from a lot of content to pull from exactly um so again you know it just goes back to, again to like you know just be careful with what, what you put on there and then i think my biggest thing about it is and this was something that i kind of we already touched on at the very beginning is just know what you are signing up for when you have a smartphone. I'm not saying that don't do it because I mean, Hey, everybody's got smartphones. And at this yeah. point I almost feel like it's almost impossible not to have a smartphone kind of is. Um, for most jobs uh -huh. because they're very reliant on it. Right. It's the convenience of everything and it makes things easier right i think even for schools right they want a lot of the students to have some sort of a smartphone for internet access and other stuff like that um and so uh just know that when you have a smartphone you, there's a certain amount of anonymity that you lose because of the amount of information just by just having the smartphone itself yeah. Um, that's what you, that's what you get. That's what you signed up for. Right. And a lot of people don't like to hear that. A lot of people don't like this say like, Oh no, I didn't say that my one, you know, and of course no one wants that, but it, honestly, that's kind of what you're getting in those fine prints where, where no one wants to read the nice privacy policy. Um, yeah. But that's essentially what you're getting, right? It's that's what's in there. getting the convenience. Yep. And that's, what's in those, uh, privacy policies is giving up that, that security. And really we're all willing to do that in favor, like you said, in favor of convenience, whether we admit it or not. Um, and that's, that's where society does. We've done it with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, our smartphones, and now TikTok. And actually this is a bit off topic, but this is the last question I wanted to ask you was um, <clears throat> there's a new push, right? For TikTok. To be banned. Uh, we're seeing a lot with government officials, uh, military. Um, 
What's your thoughts on this? Because to me, I my my opinion is it's hypocritical. The information the Chinese are collecting on us uh, is a lot of the same information that our own government is collecting on us through our American-made social media, right? I think it's hypocritical. It's okay when we do it, but not when another country does it. And keep in mind the fact, too, that it's not just Americans that Facebook's collecting data on. It's everybody around the world, right? Yeah. No, I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, I mean, I think relatively recently India announced that they were banning TikTok um, as well. Um, I think the the biggest problem, I mean, honestly, right now, right, I think the biggest problem is that uh, the difference between the United States and China is right is because China is communist and the United States is uh, democratic, right? Where uh, you know, that's the that's the big difference, right? As right. well as the United States also has NATO treaties with a ton of other um, countries, uh, and a part of that NATO treaty is also a part of the military process. So I'm sure there's a lot of strong arming that comes within that process, right? Of we don't like this, so we need to strong arm everyone else to not like this because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly. I go back and forth on this. Uh, the security brain inside of me does say I probably shouldn't be using TikTok anymore. And I will say that I don't, I actually utilize YouTube shorts more than I do TikTok. Um, Coincidentally, uh, those have been picking up in usage and popularity lately. YouTube has changed their algorithm to gear even more towards shorts than it was already. Mm-hmm. And so I'll say that I do find that I am on there more. Um, and I'll say some of the security concerns do kind of push me towards YouTube rather than TikTok. Um, I do, I have heard a lot of stuff about TikTok, about like how much data and what types of data is being stored. I think that's probably one of the bigger things about TikTok than it is about anything else is the type of data that it's sending back. Like... Um, it's not just like, of course, your regular user data of like email addresses and stuff like that. It's more like more specific stuff about like who this person is and how they interact with things and all sorts of stuff. Again, these are all things that Meta and um, Google and other United States companies are, are, are grabbing and tracking. But I think the biggest thing right now is that... Um, China legally is one of those very gray areas, right? Um, and they kind of don't have a lot of rules when it comes to Western stuff, right? If you were to say like, man, this Chinese company screwed me over, I'm going to sue them. The Chinese, the Chinese government is going to come in and say like, nah, bro, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's not going to And happen. I think that's... Yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of, and that's this kind of around the same reason why we banned, right, Huawei from, uh, from the United States. Yeah. Uh, because of the information that the, uh, that Huawei devices were able to gather and move over to China, and then we wouldn't be able to do anything to them because of how their how communism kind of works for their country. Um, and I think that was kind of a big liability for not just um, U.S. manufacturers and U.S. Yeah. companies, but also, you know, U.S. users and U.S. citizens. Um, so, of course, of course, I'll go ahead. Well, I was just curious, what are they doing with that information? I mean, they can use that information for a lot of things, right? So uh, you can use it for similar stuff to, um, I hate beating on this drum, but because um, everyone has, but it, you know, you can use it for stuff similar to like what happened with the 2016 election, right? Um, where you can create bots that are very specifically oriented to specific users and target them 
and say, hey, you need to do this way, right? You can lead them this way. Yep. Because you now have a, you have the information on this user that has been very well sculpted by the algorithms within TikTok uh, to create a, a very good idea of what this person look or how this person acts, how they think. And then you can create a bot to perfectly tailor um, how to respond to someone <clears throat> like this and say, hey, these are going to work for you. It's not just ads, right? It's, it's propaganda or even like things that would better work to make, say, a certain law go into action or a certain politician to be elected or something similar to that. Yeah. I think it's more along the line along that i think the biggest thing right now and i think we are finding this out more and more we find it out every day is that information is power yeah. especially nowadays <clears throat> and so a lot of that exactly and so the more information that you have about not just um a country's users or or not just a country but it, it's users itself gives you far more ideas on where you can go with that information and how sure. you can better manipulate them to do what you need, right? Because it's less of, I think now we're getting into the age of less of let's attack someone with our military might and now let's attack them with our cybersecurity or, or, or cyber warfare or we'll attack them with uh, like more puppeteering type deals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Uh, well, and the thing is, is you know, um, I get where that would be a concern. Uh, and I didn't mean to cut you off, man. I, no, no worries. Yeah. No, if if go ahead, if you had any other thoughts, I I was just gonna say that it <clears throat> it makes sense why they would be concerned after the history with the elections and all that kind of stuff. Proof that Russia and China were interfering. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Exactly. And I think that's I think that's probably one of their biggest scares there. Yeah. So bottom line, I think that is something, one thing that does really very much creep me out, especially because of the amount of data that it grabs. It's not, it's because it's not just like your behaviors, but it's also location data and sort all sorts of other stuff. It's also oh, tracking yeah. you throughout your whole phone. If you so go through, oh, sorry, I didn't mean, I keep cutting you off. No, no, go ahead. If you keep, if you go through uh, system information or your storage data, and look at how much data TikTok has stored. Oh my gosh. It already, I mean, even just within a short time of me using it, it surpassed the way I built up on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. And so, and, it, yeah, and you have to think about it too. That's only, that's just local data. That's not even stuff that it's sending out. Yep. Yeah. So, and of course, you know, there's already been tons of stuff that's been published out there showing that TikTok is also tracking you throughout other applications that you're using. So even when you're not using TikTok, you're still using TikTok in some way. Uh, and it's all used, of course, to better um, advertise, but also better like find videos that work for you. And of course, it, all of this is used to create a better visualization or a better profile of who you are as a person. Yep. Right? <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, my security brain kind of goes off and yells at me all the time. Every time that I'm on TikTok and says like, yeah. this is, you know, you probably shouldn't have this. You probably shouldn't be using this um, because of X, Y, and Z or whatever like that. So um, it's very good at what it does. And so that's probably one of the main reasons why I still am on it as well as I, I have tons of, I have friends who are on it as well. Uh, and you know, I get videos from them and all sorts of other stuff. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, there is probably going to be a point, um, happily what I've done my is wean myself enough off of it to where if, there is like a big gavel that comes down and says like, you can't have, um, you can't have TikTok anymore or whatever like that. Or they take it away. I won't feel like a, you know, a big punch to the gut um, because, you know, I, there's other stuff that I can do. There's other platforms that I can use. 
Um, it yeah. would be a big problem, I understand, for a lot of creators who have thrived very well on TikTok. But yeah. at the same yeah. time, I feel like um, a lot of those creators also, a lot of the big ones at least, also understand that Man, we had a sneeze, an on-camera sneeze. He's back, though. And now you're muted, though. Can't hear you now. There we go. You muted his mic, man. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to make sure that everyone could get ready. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But uh, a lot of those influencers, like big influencers, also understand that they need to be multi- uh, they they can't just be on TikTok. They need to yeah. be everywhere because it's the only way to actually grow their brand. Absolutely. Well, and uh, you know, I I've noticed some growth from TikTok, <clears throat> specifically in regard to the, my band's music video. Um, we've talked about getting on TikTok for this podcast. <clears throat> it has to be a multi-platform approach. But when things are going on, like what's going on right now, it doesn't really make sense, you know, to get involved and, and try to build, um, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, an entire uh, business upon it, you know. <clears throat> um, it's really interesting um, that they started, uh, you know, sharing all of these ads at the time that they have to, you see TikTok ads everywhere now on TV, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, they're definitely trying to plant their feet before anything happens. It does make me wonder what the reaction would look like um, among the younger generation, especially that's Mm -hmm. even more accustomed to using it than we are. I, you know, personally, I've always said this, if social media burns, (laughs) No offense, Mark Zuckerberg, please boost this uh, live stream. But um, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't cry if TikTok goes away. I really wouldn't. But um you know, with that said, I, so I, this is kind of funny. Um but I'm also noticing TikTok having some of the issues that Twitter is. Mm-hmm. Um because it seems to <clears throat> promote animus uh, more so than other platforms do. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Here, here's a great example. January 6th committee uh, that's investigating the insurrection on the Capitol did an experiment um, that found it took, they created a fictional account and it took just 75 minutes before they started getting sort of Nazi content. Wow. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I did a uh, acoustic cover of a Slipknot song, which was based off of a joke that Blake Ellis and I had. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And at first it went bonkers on YouTube and people were livid. I mean, some of the comments were hilarious, but it only took a matter of time and it blew up on TikTok as well. And people were so mad. They were like, no. Or they're like, I did not need to see that. Or somebody, the, the drummer for uh, Slipknot died, I think, last year. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Joey Jordanson didn't die for this. And I was like, good Lord, dude. All I did, I sang it fine. The performance was fine. It was just, I took a metal act like Slipknot and turned it into an acoustic song, right? So all diehard Slipknot fans. It was funny. I click on their profile and it was like all they posted about was Slipknot, you know? I was like, are these even real accounts? But the thing is, you know, I I got tons of views, but I got tons of likes. So Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't take any of it personally. It happened on YouTube as well, to be fair. Um, But I got a ton of negativity as well. And I was like, that's what's fueling the algorithm is this controversy, you know, Um, on YouTube, on the shorts, I've never had anything like it. I looked, I had 68 likes and 56 dislikes. <laughs> it's almost an even split. And the only reason they hated it is because I like 
demasculine deep i don't know demasculinated why is that a weird word just like toned down one of their heavy metal songs you know what I mean? yeah i don't know that's a tough one right but yeah. that was the only reason and so then i was like screw it i'm gonna try it with the metallica song right and so i did now all of a sudden i'm getting requests people are like oh do this one next do that one next like okay <laughs> So I did, right? Meanwhile, my clinic that I'm, uh, you know, I'm communications and social media for uh, uh, in public health. And we started a new Instagram, new TikTok. And we posted this clip on TikTok. And it was one of our doctors was getting interviewed for the news. And my supervisor was there. Just took a quick video of one of the answers she was giving for the news, sent it to me, we put it on TikTok. It was 13 seconds talking about how <clears throat> um, this time of year, if you think you're experiencing allergies, you're probably not because it's so cold. There's not a lot of allergens right now, you know, for outdoors especially. So if you feel like you're experiencing allergies where you normally wouldn't be, Get tested so that way you can know. That was it. 52,000 views later. Dude. Fifty. i I've never posted anything that's gotten that many views. Wow. 52,000 views. And I think uh, over, over 100 comments for sure. And most of them were just trash talking COVID. That's crazy. I, I went back and forth with two people early on. Just so I could establish in the comments section a defense for any, you know, because this person was like, well, what's what's the point? They were like, just so you can tell other people you have COVID. I was like, it's important to know if you have COVID or not so you can get the right treatment for it. Mm -hmm. And it said, well, I didn't I had they go. I had COVID. I didn't get any special kind of treatment. And it was like, just stop. And I was like. I started listing off the special treatments you can get for COVID antiviral treatments, monoclonal antibodies. Like, I'm sorry, you didn't get that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but you know, you there. could have. Yeah, you it's could there. have. You definitely could have. So I had already established that, but man, there was just tons and tons. And again, I'm like, like that one that commented that was Apple user 26107589. Like, you know. <laughs> Are these bots? Mm -hmm. um, are they real? And they're getting shown this because of the way the algorithm is formatted. It just, that's the thing that kind of concerns me. You know, yeah. I see a lot of stuff and <clears throat> even stuff with the intent to be comical is kind of, uh, it walks the line from time to time, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I don't know. So, a lot to think about with that. I think we had a good discussion on all this. It's getting late. So we hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Thank you for jumping in on the live stream. The first live stream of the year, the second recorded episode of the year. So thank you guys so much for getting on this. Remember to leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe if you like us, um, and shout out Denison for his big move, man. It's a big change, exciting change, more details to come. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you next week.